Okay, let's get it started. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our second lecture in Modern SSD. In this uh, lecture, we are going to cover NAND flash read write operations in more detail. Before we get uh, start for it today lecture, I'd like to <clears throat> invite everyone to our today um, EFCL and Safari live seminar. Uh, this seminar is presented by uh, Prof. Sagata Ose, and at 5 p.m. Zurich time. So feel free to join the meeting uh, via YouTube. Our students, uh, I, I already sent you the link uh, to join the Zoom in the in the in Moodle. So feel free to join Zoom and ask questions. So uh, in, the, in the previous meeting, we talked about SSD components and also the organization of SSD that basically in each SSD, we have uh, several um, flash chips or flash packages. And in each uh, flash chip, we have a few uh, dies. And in each die, we have a few planes and each plane consists of uh, many blocks. And each block has many pages. So today we want to discuss basically how we can read and write uh, data in NAND flash uh, pages and uh, the sensing circuitry. So as a kind of a reminder, so we, we, yeah, we explained in the previous meeting that basically a flash cell is a transistor which has a gate source and drain with the one difference that uh, there is a special material, which we call it floating gate for 2D flashes and charge trap for 3D flash cells. So this floating gate has, uh, is capable to basically store or trap uh, electrons. So basically when you want to program flash cells, you need to apply a high voltage, which is a program uh, voltage. Typically it's kind of a 20 volt. And then, uh, then you have a tunneling effect. So electrons from the substrate, they uh, go through this floating gate. And as a consequence, as a result, the threshold voltage of this transistor becomes higher. So basically, you need to apply higher voltage to turn on this transistor. So in order to distinguish between raised and programmed state of the flash cells, we need to apply a reference voltage which is uh, something between uh, nominal threshold voltage and uh, program threshold voltage, which is higher. So if by applying the reference voltage, your transistor becomes on, it means that uh, your, uh, basically your flash cell is not programmed. And if it is not uh, on, it means that your flash cell is already programmed, which we typically consider uh, arrays as one and program as zero. Any question for this part? Okay. And when you want to basically erase the flash cell again, you need to apply a reverse voltage, like uh, minus uh, 20 volt, so that you can move the electrons that they are in uh, floating gate to the substrate. Okay. So when we program, uh, flash cells, we have such a uh, distribution for voltage threshold. So basically in this uh, curve, you can see the voltage threshold voltage distribution of cells in a program page block or chip. So in, in the Y axis, we have number of cells and in the X axis is the threshold voltage. So basically you, are, you can see um, a distribution. So for program cells, Threshold voltage is higher than reference voltage, but it's not a kind of sharp line that every all cells are uh, has this, uh, equal and 
yeah, has, has have equal voltage, uh, threshold voltage. So basically, yeah, we have a distribution. In other words, basically, you can uh, inter uh, yeah, you can interpret this uh, curve as that in each point we have we can have kind of y number of cells that they have x threshold voltage. So why we have a distribution? This is because of the variation across the cells. Basically, when we are uh, fabricating uh, flash any actually uh, logic and flash chips are not also different. So we have process variation and cells are not similar. So some cells are more easily programmed and erased, some of them are not. So basically in the end, you have kind of distribution. So then you have you should have a kind of you know margins so that you can uh, basically dif uh, differentiate between uh, arrays and program states. So yeah, this this curve is kind of is, is really important, and basically you cannot see any uh, paper talking about flash cells that they don't show this distribution uh, in uh, threshold voltages. So when we have a that in the previous slide we consider SLC, which is a single level cell program, but we can also have MLC, which is multi level cell technique. So usually when we call uh, when we name MLC, we mean uh, basically two bits per cell, and we call uh, like when we want to call three bit, we say TLC, and when we want to say four bit per cell, we say QLC. But as a general concept, MLC can be considered as multi-level cell, as the name also shows. So yeah, basically when we have M level, we should have basically uh, two to the power M uh, threshold voltage states. So th these number of states require to store M bits in a single flash cell. So we, we, should, uh, we should try to basically, we, we should uh, interpret these states uh, with a special encoding. This encoding could be different. It's not a, something uh, written on a stone. So for example, here, uh, the B4 reference voltage uh, zero, we consider it as a one, one, one. And between reference zero and reference one is one, one, zero, and so on, so forth. So one thing that you can uh, pay, see here that the difference between each two consecutive states is only one bit, which is quite a common practice. So we can have different encoding, but usually, uh, yeah, usually uh, designers are try to encode, consider encoding that between each two consecutive states, we have only one difference. So can you imagine why it is important? Any thoughts? Yeah, so the thing is that uh, it is common, could happen that for consecutive states, we have some uh, overlapping at some point so that we have errors. So when uh, consecutive, state, uh, consecutive uh, states, they have only one error, one dB difference, then the, the, the number of errors is, less, is, is usually one. So basically, you can uh, you can fix that with uh, error correction code easily. It, it is one of the reasons. There should be also other reasons, but uh, I think we can move on. So, yeah, the, the, we have limited widths of the voltage threshold window, which needs to make each uh, threshold voltage state narrow. This is important. Because you want to, yeah, here uh, compared to SLC that we have only two states. So your basically this uh, distribution, each uh, state can be kind of, can be uh, widened, wider. But here, uh, because we need to uh, distinguish between the states more accurately. So we need narrower the distribution in each state. And also we need to have uh, enough margin between two consecutive steps, states, 
to make sure that, uh, yeah, basically to reduce the number of errors. But in reality, usually after a program, after we program the cell and we read and basically after some time, these uh, states are shifted. So, which is usually can be solved by um, modifying the reference voltage. Basically, when we want to read the page, we apply a reference voltage and we read the data and then we check the basically ECC. If the ECC is correct, then we are done. But if the ECC is not correct, means that meaning means that basically the read is not correct. So usually in uh, flash, demand flash uh, SSC, we need to modify the reference voltage and reread re or re re uh, retry uh, read operation. But the thing is that it's not only shifted. So usually after uh, some reads and after some time, these states become widened. So, and at some point you can see that we have errors. Uh, some, some of these uh, margins, they can overlap and you, you will have errors. And no matter actually how much you uh, change the reference voltage, basically if they are widened and uh, you have overlap between the states, you may have errors. And in order to solve that, basically you need to raise uh, the, 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 the page and uh, which, which happened actually in the block granularity and rewrite your data in, in somewhere else. So you can see here that basically we, when we have more bits per cell, we can provide higher density, but lower at the price of lower reliability. Which actually the, the, uh, the issue is not only reliability. So you can see that later that when we have a higher number of bits per cell, the read operation and write operation would be also uh, slower. Which, which can affect performance. So basically, if you want to optimize your SSD for performance and higher reliability, usually uh, you need to use SSD programming mode. Any question? Cool. Okay, now we can uh, jump to jump here and see how we can uh, program page. So in this figure, uh, consider that we have a target page that we want to program it. So one thing that we need to do is that we basically, we need to apply VCC or high voltage to SS, SSL and GSL transistors, which uh, as you may remember, we need those transistors to connect uh, our NAND string to the bit line. So yeah, we need to apply a VCC to those transistors to apply to connect this NAND string to the bit line. Inside that NAND string, there is a, only one transistor or one NAND flash cell that we want to program. When I'm saying that uh, only one NAND flash cell, I mean across pages, across the page. So you have several NAND flash cells that they, they are placed inside in one page. So we program all of them together in parallel. So we need to apply v, v pass, which is a quite large or high, which is high enough, let's say, to uh, make transistor on, no matter if it is programmed or it is raised. So then when we apply V pass to a NAND flash cell, that NAND flash cell uh, uh, behaves as a, trans as a resistor. And for uh, those cells that we want to program them, we need to apply uh, voltage programming voltage. Okay. Now let's take a deeper look to that uh, page that we want to program. So consider here, we have a page and we want to program some bits uh, in this page. So here you can see that, yeah, some of them want, we want to write zero, some of them we want to write one. So since the page that we want to program data in it is already erased because we don't have, we don't use in place uh, update. So we, whenever we want to write to a page, the page is, has been already erased before. So those cells that we want to write one, 
basically we don't need to do anything because they already erased those cells are erased and we we usually encode the uh, erase the uh, state as one so here we are consider slc programming so for those cells we don't need to do anything which we usually call it as inhibited so basically we apply a voltage to a bit line as a bit line control to inhibit cells to not be programmed. So those cells that we don't want to program them, we need to apply VCC to the bit line. And those cells that we want to program them, we need to apply, we need to connect them to the ground. So before programming, this is the state, or I mean, uh, the, yeah, distribution of the threshold voltage for that page. You can see that all of the cells in that uh, page, they are already erased, which mean, means that uh, all of them has uh, threshold voltage lower than the reference voltage that we have. So consider that we want to program. So in theory, we want something like that, so that we apply program voltage. And after some time, those cells that we want to program zero, they go to the, basically their uh, threshold voltage become higher than reference voltage. And those cells that we don't want to program them, so we basically we make them uh, inhibited and uh, by applying VCC to the beat line. And in the end, we have this uh, beautiful uh, distribution. But in reality, it doesn't happen. So when you apply a program voltage, the maximum program voltage at once, you will have something like this. So some cells are inhibited because you apply VCC to the bit line, but those cells that you want to apply, basically you apply, uh, you connect them, connect their bit line to the ground, and uh, you are uh, basically you want to program them. You will have something like that. So some cells they have uh, after applying program voltage, we have they have threshold voltage higher than reference. Some of cells they. Basically, they are uh, close to the margin, and some cells are basically they don't program. But why is that? Again, it's because some cells are easy to program and some cells are hard to program. So, in order to deal with this issue, NAND flash uh, chips they use incremental step pulse programming technique, meaning that they apply program voltage step by step. So. At the first step, we apply program voltage zero, which is a bit, uh, it's, it's, it is not uh, uh, the highest program voltage. It is uh, some programming voltage, but we don't uh, increase, uh, we don't apply the maximum voltage at once. So some cells after applying this uh, voltage, we evaluate the cells. We can observe that some cells here, they have, they basically their threshold voltage currently is higher than uh, the reference voltage, meaning that they already program well. So we evaluate and we verify some of these uh, cells that they are programmed well. In the next step, we connect those cells that they are already programmed well to the VCC, meaning that we want to basically inhibit them again. So we inhibit program cells at each step. And then we apply a higher uh, program voltage, which is, we can call it V program one, which is a bit higher than V program zero, and repeat the process until we have this beautiful uh, distribution. Okay, cool. Any question here? or from a live audience in YouTube? Uh, one quick question. Uh, VCC sure. in this case is higher than the highest programming voltage or how large would that be? No, no, no. Uh, VCC is usually uh, lower than that. All right. It is, yeah. If I'm not, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Rakesh, do you have a... Any idea? I think VCC is lower than program voltage, right? Uh, yes, uh, yes, no. Yeah, okay.
Okay, cool. So now uh, after, so this is SLC, right? To write MSC, the process is not so different. This is similar to this, but basically you can imagine, we need to do it more carefully. And uh, after each program step, we need to read, uh, evaluate, see that if we are already in that step, in that stage, uh, state of the threshold voltage that we want. But yeah, the overall the process is the, you can see the idea here. So after uh, this, now we can jump into how we can read. So you have this program page and then, and now you want to read it. So in order to read a page, we apply a reference voltage to the word line, uh, uh, word line line. So, and other cells, as we also showed for in the program uh, phase, they, they should have, we should apply a, a V pass, which is again, high enough to make those transistors or those uh, flash cells on, no matter if they are program or RS. So here uh, we apply V reference and then uh, we need to first charge all bit lines, which is, we, Typically, we call it a pre-charge state. We will also cover uh, this pre-charge and how we sense it in more detail in this lecture. But here, I want to give you an idea about that. So basically, we need to charge all, all bit lines to VCC in the pre-charge state. And also, we apply V reference to the word line. And then we check that if the charge in the bit line is uh, basically uh, drain or not. So if we have current, meaning that the flash cell that we have in the in the bit line in, in the NAND stream uh, behaves as a resistor, meaning that the flash cell was erased or is erased. So, so then we, we usually encode it as one. And for fun, uh, some of these flash cells that we, we didn't observe any current, which means that the voltage or the yeah the, the voltage in the bit line does not drain. So those the flash cells are already programmed because they act as a uh, open switch. So with this uh, technique, we can easily understand uh, yeah the, uh, the state of the flash cells. And we can basically read zero and one for SLC. For MLC, <coughs> It's not so different. So consider that here we have this MLC, which is actually usually uh, people uh, call it as a TLC because we have three bits. So consider that we want to read the CSP, which is central uh, significant bit. So we have MSP, CSP, and LSP. Consider that we want to read CSP in this uh, encoding uh, technique. So in order to do that, basically you need to check uh, what are uh, the reference voltages that you can see flip in the CSP bit. For example, if you uh, check uh, reference voltage zero, you can see that CSP is not changed, right? However, for reference voltage one, you can see that CSP goes from one to zero. For reference voltage two, we don't have any flipping. For reference three, we have flip. For reference four, we don't have, again, flipping. And for uh, reference five, we have this flip. So yeah, these uh, reference voltage that you observe flipping are the key reference voltages that you need to apply. Yeah, basically uh, for NAND flash uh, chips, depending on the coding uh, technique, and what bits uh, you want to read, uh, it, it, uh, the flash cell knows that what reference voltage uh, should be applied. You can see actually here that basically uh, coding technique can provide some trade-off that we, we will actually try to mix, uh, have some discussion, brief discussion in the, in the next slide about uh, the coding technique. But yeah, uh, for now, consider that we have this coding. 
as I said, for example, for reference two and reference six, uh, we don't have any flipping, so we don't uh, consider them. So we first apply uh, reference five. So by applying these, some of these cells you read one and some of them you read zero. So you can see that actually uh, all of them you, for in this example, you read it correctly, except the, the second one. So it, it has zero, zero, zero. If you check the distribution here, you can see that zero, zero, zero is uh, actually lower than reference five, meaning that we will read one when we apply reference five. But in reality, we should read zero, meaning that we need to iterate on the reference voltage. So after the first step, we store the, the value that we read in a, in, a, in a buffer, and then we apply another reference voltage, which is a third reference voltage here. So by applying that, again, you have a beta stream, which you apply, uh, store in another buffer, and then you apply reference voltage one, and you read data. So after uh, all of these operations, basically you need, uh, you need a function or a logic to decide which is the final value here. So for this coding example, if you check, you can actually check, uh, do it as, as, as a, I mean, offline, as an optional homework. You can see that uh, basically X or logic can provide the, the actual result that we, we are looking for. So for this coding example, we can XOR the, when we want to read CSV, so we need to apply three reference voltages in a row, and then we XOR the output of these, uh, each of these, uh, uh, yeah, uh, reads. And the final uh, result, I mean, the output of the XOR logic would be the actual bit that we are looking for. Any question here? Okay, cool. So some uh, important takeaways. So bit encoding, as we observed in the previous slides, affect the read latency. So here, we, when we want to read CSV, we need to apply three reference voltages, meaning that we need to do three sensing. So here as an example, I provide the uh, two encoding, bit encoding uh, example. The, the first one, I mean, the, the top one is, the, is, is actually the bit encoding that we, we have seen in the previous slides. But in the bottom, we have another bit encoding, which actually we don't have, ex ex again, we have only, uh, one difference between consecutive steps, but uh, states, but uh, it's not, uh, yeah, but it's different. So consider that you want to read LSV. So in, in, the, in the top uh, bit encoding, you have uh, two states that you can observe that uh, basically we have flipping in LSV. So in order to read LSP, we need to apply reference voltage zero and reference voltage four. Basically, we can read LSP by two sensing. But in the bottom sensing, uh, I mean, bit encoding, we can see that we have four states that we have uh, flipping in LSP. So we need to apply four sensing, uh, reference zero, reference two, reference four, and reference six. So I now I have a question here from you guys. So do you think uh, the top bit encoding is kind of superior to the bottom, or there is a trade-off? Any thoughts?
I mean, the top one is probably just uh, better for like, uh, or worse for other bits, uh, like for the LSP, we now only need uh, two reference voltages, but for uh, the CSP, for example, we would need more. Yeah, but uh, for CSP, how many sensing we need for the, uh, for the button with encoding? Only two. Only two. Right. True. So yeah, exactly. So for the in the top, uh, we have uh, for reading CSV, we need three uh, sensing as we observed in the previous slide. But in the bottom, we need two. Or for, to read MSV, most significant bit. In the top, we need uh, two sensing. But in the bottom, we need only one sensing. So basically, you can see now here that uh, there should be difference between bit encoding. And there is a trade-off uh, between basically uh, the number of sensing. And, and, and actually, this can also provide some uh, variations in the latency of the pages that you are looking for. Recall that in the previous lecture, we mentioned that basically when when we're using TLC, for example, so basically you can store three pages in one word line. So these three pages can be accessed with different latencies. So if we if we use, for example, the uh, bottom bit encoding, we can, uh, since MSB pages is uh, quite fast, since we can access MSB with only one sensing, we can consider that as a cache or, or those pages that we want to access more quick, I mean, faster, uh, since they are more critical, for example. So we can think of basically a trade off in the variation, in latency variations of accessing these pages. Those pages that they are not latency critical, we can put them in LSP in the bottom uh, bit encoding because LSP is quite uh, uh, slow in the bottom encoding, it, it needs uh, four sensing. But those pages that they are latency critical, we can write them in MSC. So you can see basically it, it gives you some uh, control or management on the on page on pages, how where you place them in LSB, CSB, and MSB, which actually in research is quite uh, an important, interesting uh, research topics in uh, SSB. Does it make sense? So we intentionally try to have a difference and not try to uh, uh, arrange it in a way where it's as uh, evenly distributed as possible. Yeah, that that actually depends on your uh, on the, on the. First of all, it depends on the vendor. So some vendors uh, or manufacturer they use uh, specific bit encoding, like with different reasons. Some of them they may want to balance the read, read latency. But some of them, I mean, as I said, for example, they want to have this uh, uh, variation in latencies so that it provides some, I mean, uh, benefits on how we can manage uh, more intelligent uh, the SSC. So in the end, uh, my answer is that it depends on what is your intention. Make sense? Yeah. Great. So, yeah. So now let's uh, take a brief look at uh, sensing circuitry. When we want to uh, read from a NAND flash, basically we have three steps: pre-charge, evaluation, and discharge. So here uh, in this figure, I show a NAND string and the bit line and some latching circuitry. So we will uh, see the circuit in a uh, latch circuit in, in later slides. But here, uh, let's have a, I mean, kind of overview on this circuit. So basically, uh, each bit, bit line is connected to the pre-charge voltage uh, with a transistor, which we call it M pre. So in the pre-charge state, we first, uh, we activate transistor uh, M pre to 
Yeah, to to low uh, to drive uh, the beat line to the pre-charged voltage. Basically, you can also consider there as a VCC. So after doing that, bit line your bit line is now uh, charged, and also uh, there is a uh, capacitor, which we call it sense out capacitor. This is also has been charged to pre-charged voltage. So after pre-charge state, we go to the evaluation step, which we want to basically the, the goal is to evaluate if the if your flash um, cell is already uh, stored, it is already programmed or erased, basically. Those flash cells that you are uh, you aim to read them. So you apply a reference voltage and you disconnect uh, the basically you turn off the pre-charged transistor, then basically your bit line is not connected to the pre-charged voltage anymore. So, and then you can basically check that if the charge of that transistor, of that capacitor, uh, sends out uh, capacitor is drained or not. So if the threshold voltage is lower than reference voltage, meaning that, uh, yeah, meaning that your transistor, your flash cell is not programmed. So it, it acts as a uh, resistor and the charge flows, uh, quickly flows through the NAND stream, which we sense it as one based on our contract. And uh, if the if threshold voltage is higher than reference voltage, the target cell blocks the bit line discharge, as you can see here, and we sense it as zero. The latch circuit should be also on in the evaluation circuit, in the evaluation phase, which we will see how we design the latch circuit. And after evaluation, we need to do discharge, basically that we discharge the bit line so that we can uh, use the bit line for future uh, reads. So we have a latching circuit. Here you can see this figure. So this is the bit line. We don't. I don't. Uh, here we don't draw the NAND string anymore. So we have we have bit line and pre-charge transistor voltage pre-charge sense out capacitor here and a sensing circuit. Uh, sorry, latching circuit. So before the evaluation step, the chip, uh, I mean flash chip, initializes the latching circuit. So to initialize the latching circuit, we need to activate transistor M1. So this transistor becomes on. So since we are pre, we are pre-charging, the voltage of sense out becomes one. And since it is on, uh, this transistor here is turned on, which connects the latch circuit to the to the ground. And since we also activate M1, you can see that here the output, I mean output bar, uh, is connected to the ground. So the output becomes zero. And here we have a back-to-back -back knot. I mean a looping. Uh, Feedback with uh, two NOT gates with feedback, so which which uh, as a result the output voltage here becomes one in the pre-charged state. Note that transistor M two is off in the pre-charged state, so the output voltage here does not is not connected to the ground, and it is only derived by this back-to-back -back NOT. So. In the, in the pre-charged state, we only activate M1, and as a result, the output voltage output bar becomes zero, and the voltage output here becomes one. This is in the pre-charged state. Make sense? Okay. So in the evaluation step, we basically uh, disable uh, pre-charged transistor because we want to evaluate. 
And also we disable M1. And while enabling M2. So basically, when we want to evaluate what is stored in the NAND flash cell, we need to disable pre-charge transistor, which is uh, obvious. We need to also disable M1 transistor, which we actually yeah, activated before in the pre-charge state. And uh, we need to enable M2. So then we will have two different steps. So if the voltage threshold of that uh, NAND cell that you want to read is lower than reference voltage, basically your NAND flash, as we know, will behave as a resistor and your charge here drains or flows quickly. So the voltage in sense out capacitor becomes zero, meaning that this transistor that we have here is off. So since it is off, there is no connection between the output voltage here to the ground. So although we already turn on M2 transistor here, but since this transistor is off, there is no connection to the ground and this output voltage store or keeps its charge, which is one. So you can see how we read one here. And in the second, I mean, case, if the threshold voltage is higher than reference voltage, uh, basically your charge does not drain. And this sense out is a still one so that this transistor is on. And since we also turn on this transistor, the output voltage here flows quickly to the ground and it becomes zero. So basically, when your threshold voltage is higher than reference voltage, you read zero. So this is how we sense what is actually stored in the NAND flash. So, make sense? Any question? Okay, great. So, as an interesting point here, you can have actually inverse read. So basically you can implement not gate easily by only inverse, simply changing the order of activation sequence for M1 and M2. So in normal read, we first activate M1 in the pre-charge state. And in the evaluation step, we need to deactivate M1 and activate M2. But if you do it in a, different way. So basically you first uh, activate M2 and in the evaluation step, you disable M2 and activate M1. So then you will have this reverse sensing, which uh, I guess you can imagine. So by this, basically you can uh, implement easily not gates. So if you want to, for example, read the inverse of the page that you are looking for, you, the only thing you need to do is that you apply inverse sensing. Make sense? Okay. So with this sensing uh, and uh, knowing actually exactly what's going on here, we can implement uh, different gates like uh, AND gate, OR gates, NAND, NOR, and also combination of AND and OR logics in only one sensing, which is quite impressive. So basically you can, for example, you can do AND operation with uh, 128 uh, input with only one sensing. So in this paper, Flash Cosmos, we basically, the title is In Flash Bulk Bitwise Operations Using Inherent Computation Capability of NAND Flash Memory. We actually, uh, we, we already published this work in uh, Micro 2022. So yeah, the, the key idea of this work is uh, multi word line sensing that we can activate several word, word lines together to implement uh, AND and OR operations. So actually for the next uh, meeting, 
uh, we are going to describe this work in in more detail. So this is our uh, plan for the next uh, week that we will go over this flash cosmos in more detail because the conference talk that uh, we had for this work was only 10 minutes. So we are going to uh, present this work in more detail and basically answer many questions. So uh, I would recommend everyone uh, to attend next week meeting to know basically uh, in detail uh, this work. So by this, I, I like to uh, yeah conclude today's meeting. So for the live uh, attendees, uh, I'd like to thank you everyone for attending. And we will continue our course next week with uh, Flash Cosmos work. So I'm going to stop the live streaming.